Hello everyone, I'm Modi here from your Target Com YouTube channel and this will be continuation of understanding OS 2.0 authorization flow with the Google APIs. So in previous videos, I have explained how can we use the Google Drive APIs to upload files of different sizes in Google Drive. So in the next two or three videos, I will explain how can we use Gmail APIs. I In first video, I will explain how can we send an email via Gmail API using Postman. And in the second video, I will explain how can we send an email with attachment via Gmail API using Postman. So let's focus on how can we send a simple email without any attachment via Gmail API using Postman. So the authorization process means to generate the access token, you need to follow the same steps whatever we did earlier to generate the access token. We need to do the same thing for Gmail APIs. So in the previous videos, I have already created or generated my client ID and client secret. So that time I had enabled only Google Drive API. So to use the Gmail API, obviously I need to first enable it. So I logged in again in, into the Google Cloud and I went to the same project, whatever project I have created for my Google Drive demo so for this you need to click on enable api and services click on gmail api here and then we need to enable it so there's no need to create a new project again you can just enable the new services or new product or new google api in the same existing project like whatever i did just now then second thing you need to go and add the scope like we did for google drive so if you go to gmail api if you go to this official documentation and if you see go to reference and suppose i want to send the email so if you go to the send api if you come down it will say that what scopes you require so whatever project we have created that time we have added only the google drive scope go to OAuth consent screen click on edit app no need to do anything here click save and continue in the next page you can see that whatever scopes we had added in previous video those were from google drive but since we enable the gmail api this time we need to add the gmail scopes as well then only you can use the or you can generate the access token which can perform sending an email simply click on add or remove scope and come here and search for gmail select everything okay click on update there will be no change in the credentials whatever client id and client secret you had earlier for the google drive same thing you need to use but you need to generate your authorization code again because whatever authorization code we generated there also you need to pass the scope if you if i can show you that old code so if you see this collection which i created in the last videos you can see the scopes here whatever scope i am passing those scopes are only for the drive it doesn't contain for the gmail apis that's why we need to generate our authorization code again so that i can ask the resource owner to authenticate or give provide the concept so simple thing what you need to do you need to suppose i want to send an email so simply copy this one you can see that request one of the following over the scope so i will simply copy this one and i will add here so i am what i am going to do i am going to generate or degenerate the authorization code so there will be no changes here because we are going to use the same client id and client secret so here just need to pass the client id which i think should be updated only just let me copy paste again if if i have changed it somewhere so let me copy the client id from here and let me paste it again now i need to copy the link and let me open in a browser same user i am using this is the test user which i have added in my project and here since i have already logged in so it is not asking me to enter the cadence it is taking the same session here and if i go to my postman and i if i copy paste here i should see my authorization code now after getting the authorization code the second step we need to generate the access token so let me open this api which is to generate the access token and let me copy the code the new code with the updated scope and let me copy the client id and client secret even everything will be same let me click on send button so if you're getting this error because we have percentage to f right so it should be actually slash unicode character it was converted so let me click on send again and this time we got my access token okay which is going to expire in one hour now i need to send an email so seriously when i was preparing the content for this video i really found that the gmail documentation 
are worst here let me show you if you go to this end point which says that we need to use these two apis if you want to send any email with the attachment then you need to use this api and if you just want to send some text messages then you need to use this one this api is and here you can see it is taking one variable user id and this user user id is nothing but your email address from where you want to send and if you don't want to mention that email id again and again you can use simply me so me will automatically take the authenticated user email id either you pass your email id or pass the me both will work so it looks simple here and these are post call then if you come here it is saying that you need to pass the request body which should contain an instance of message if you click on this one it, it will take you here and to see that okay you need to pass this body right where you need to pass the id thread id label something something you have something payload so I just made do right. This looks like a very simple JSON payload for any API, any ordinary API. If you come here, you can read all the fields, whatever it is required. So when I went to the payload, which is taking a message part, if you go here, it is again showing you one JSON because it is possible, right? Inside the JSON object, you can have nested JSON object. So inside this, you can see we have headers, we have body and parts. When I read it further, it is saying that inside the headers, you can pass like to, from and subject. You can see it it will contain the standard RFC 2822 email header such as to, from and subject. Then inside the body, you have message part body something here. And if you come here, you should can understand okay something is related to my attachment i need to pass this body when i need to send an email with attachment it is not at all simple whatever it is showing up here and in many times you'll find that documentation doesn't contain everything you need to explore then i what i did i simply went to guide tab you can use the api or you can use the client libraries for the programming language like java .NET, php whatever you want to use client library you can use here so i just tried to look how they are sending an email using java java code so for that i simply click on create and send email i went to send email here and uh, i just try to understand this part creating message but i will suggest you simply go and read these things because this is really useful to understand so here the first thing they are saying that create the email contain the same convenient way and encode it was it as a base 64 url string okay one new term second thing Create a new message resource and set it as raw property up to the base 64 URL string you just created. I was not getting what it is saying still, but if I, you come down, you can see that it's a time to create an object of MIME message. Okay, so this is this code is from the client library of Java. So you can see it is setting the from recipient, then subject, then some text, and it is returning one email of MIME type. When it is time to send it, but before that, read this one. The next step is to encode the MIME message, whatever you are generating here. Instantiate a message object and set the base 64 URL encoded message string as the value of the raw property. Means if you see here, you are getting the email content that parameter here and the same email content it is encoded to base 64 URL. Right, you can see how it is creating a buffer and then it is passing here and then it is setting message set raw. So from this what I understood that you need to create the simple format where to pass the to from subject and some text and then it to encode into base 64 URL encoding and then it to set as a raw. So then again I went to this reference here and here if you did you can see here under the user user dot message dot send go to message request body here you can see it has a field called raw and inside this if you come down you can understand okay string it is taking one string and it is reading it is writing it is written here that the entire email message in an RFC 2822 formatted and base 64 URL encoded string. Now I search what is RFC 2822. So simply I did a Google search RFC 2822 and when I went here I found a documentation it is saying the internet message format. So this defines an standard of format how can we send an email. Okay, so simply I went here, I saw that there are so many related terms, terminologies I can see here and I simply went to my example messages here. So here you can see that it is simply saying that you need to have from to subject date message ID and this is the text whatever you want to send. And this could be a message from one person to another with simple addressing. Okay, so this is actually RFC 2822 format. 
you need to change the values obviously and you need to change the text whatever text you want to send you can send and obviously a lot of google search also helped me to get the solution of it so it was very simple thing you just need to take this one and edit as per your requirement convert this to base 64 url encoding and then set it, set it as a raw and send it so let me show you with the demo so first thing what i need to do i need to copy my url and i am not going to send any attachment so i will copy this url which will be a post call so go to postman create a new request and send it here so instead of user id you can put your email id email id means for which you have generated the access token remember you cannot put any random email id because for this user authorization was generated right you can pass this email id or you can simply type me then what is the next step you need to copy this format okay so let me copy this here and go to notepad plus plus or notepad whatever you have and let me update the details here like i will copy my email id i have already one try email id so that is just the two automation report by ambo2 at gmail.com and i will say that let me keep the same subject and i will simply remove this date and this thing because these are optional and uh, so hello from Amud, I simply updated something. So let me copy this. So you cannot send it hard coded. You need to convert into base 64. So simply Google search will work like base 64 URL encoding. So go to any online website where you can convert the text to base 64 URL encoded. So click on this one. You see the result, right? So you need to copy this one. And if you go to this method inside the message, this message is nothing but the request body. This is the complete JSON representation. And here you need to see, you see the raw field, right? This I need to pass as a string. So what I'm going to do, I will go here again. I'll get, click on raw, click on JSON and just pass raw field name. And whatever I generated my base 64, you are encoded a string that I'm going to pass it here. And obviously we missed the pass the authorization. So let me pass the access token so all set let me hit the send button okay so we can see it is giving me 200 okay and it is giving one id some thread id and it is saying that labels id sent means it should be in my sent request so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to open my gmail login and automatically take my login if i go to send you can see the first email it is saying that I have sent to this email ID and this is the text I given, right? And it is giving me the subject. So where I did, where I pass the subject, everything you can see here, it was from, to and subject and this was the text I passed. Okay, and everything was encoded into base64. And then I can see it is coming into the sent report. If I open my another, this one, another account where I really sent, so I can see my email ID. There should be an email. So let me show you that as well. So this is the Gmail account where I sent the email. So you can see here we have one email here and it is coming from automation report by amogmail.com and you can see this is the sub this is the text and this is the subject right so we are able to send an email using the gmail api in postman but if you have any doubt please comment on this video if you really like my videos please like comment subscribe and share with others thank you everyone